This lesson is all about the different types of displays you can make for data. So it goes all the way back to like kindergarten where you learned about pictographs um, and all the way down to our most recent graph, which is a scatter plot. So I'd like you to pause right now and just read this chart. Um, just refresh your memory about the different types of plots and what they are called and what they look like. All right, so now we have to decide which graph we're going to use. So there's sometimes there's multiple graphs you can use to display, but sometimes there's one that's going to be the best choice. So looking at the list at the top, which one would you think is going to be the best one to display the number of students in a marching band each year? So read the descriptions if you um, are not sure, and which graph do you think would be the best one? The best graph that I think for this one will be a line graph because if we're talking about things changing over time, we're going to be looking for a line graph. All right, so now letter B, we're looking for comparing people's shoe sizes with their heights. Which graph would be the best one for that? Since this one involves comparing two pieces of information, we're going to use our newest graph, which is a scatter plot, because it shows the relationship between two data sets. So since that's what we have in letter B, we're going to use a scatter plot. All right, letter C, we're looking at the population of the United States divided into age groups. Which one do you think would be the best for that? Since we're talking about numerical data, right, age, and we want to talk about how much of the population is in each particular age group, I think the best one for this would be a histogram. Because a histogram will show the frequency of each age group, and we would use a histogram of our bar graph because we have numerical data that is related to each other. Unlike a bar graph where we would use distinct values like favorite color or, uh, you know, or like the number of people in your class who like a particular food. All right, last one is letter D. We're looking at the percents of students who speak Spanish or French. So since we're looking at percents, we're going to use a circle graph because a circle graph is best used when you want to compare parts to a whole. So we're looking for comparing the two different languages, um, and the whole in this case would be the number of people in your school. So we're going to look at some examples now of what's called misleading data. And misleading data happens when you maybe change your scale or you change the size of a picture in a pictograph. Um, because when you change your scale, some of you might have noticed when you've graphed lines before that if you maybe have your scale going by twos and someone else has their scale going by threes or fours, your graphs look a lot different. And then you'll come to me and you'll say, Miss Lean, why do our graphs look different? And my response is because you have different scales. So you're changing your scale. You're skewing your data a little. It's not wrong. I don't want you to think that misleading data is necessarily wrong, but sometimes you have to go into the graph knowing that it maybe doesn't represent the data in the best way. So in example A, we have to explain why this data right here, this graph, is misleading. Well, there's two real reasons. One is that there's a break right here, which makes it misleading. So I wrote down, you cannot use a break when there is data in that area. And some of you will say, but I thought that it's okay to use a break. And it's okay to use a break when there's nothing in here because a break is telling your reader there's nothing to look at between 0 and 35, so I'm just going to skip over to 35. But if you look at the pictures, they start all the way down at 0, and so there is information between 0 and 35. So this break right here makes the graph look a little misleading. Another thing that makes the graph misleading is that suddenly rock band C's ticket width got significantly longer and, and taller or wider, um, however you want to describe it, but the proportion is not the same as graph A. 
So even though you are smart enough to, to realize that, your brain gets tricked into thinking that Rock Band C got significantly more tickets sold um, or their ticket price was a lot higher um, e- because their ticket is larger, even though it was only a difference of what looks like maybe $12. So I've added also ticket C is wider, which also makes it misleading. All right, last one together, letter B. A volunteer concludes that the number of cans of food and boxes of food donated were about the same. Explain why the conclusion is not accurate. So you can use a pictograph, and there's nothing misleading about a pictograph, or there's nothing wrong about a pictograph. But what's misleading is that if you look at the size of the food boxes, it's almost as wide as two cans. So when the column for food boxes or the row for food boxes almost matches the row for cans, you think that they would be equal, but they're actually not because cans are a lot skinnier than food boxes. So they should, if you were to give them a suggestion, they should make all of their pictures the same width. So let's write down that the conclusion is not accurate because the pictures are not the same width. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.